Hi there. My name's Ethan and I'm an editor at Webtoon. This is Creator 101, where we intend to give you everything you need in order to self-publish on Webtoon. Today we're going to be talking about pitching and what the pitch process is like at Webtoon. And we're going to sit down with Grave Weaver from I'm the Grim Reaper in order to talk about that. Hey Grave, how's it going? Hi! Great. I'm the Grim Reaper has been out for a while now, a few months. No, like a month and a half, I think. Yeah, about. I'm pretty <laughs> cool, new. I'm cool. a baby still. I really love the Webtoon, as I always have. Mm -hmm. At Webtoon, in order to get a series greenlit or to pitch a series, most of the editors usually find something on Canvas that they like and then share it with the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. I did that, and then afterwards we decided we would reach out to you and see sort of where your head was at, where you were going, what you wanted to do with the series. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when I reached out to you for that? Yeah, 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 I do remember. I thought it was a scam email, <laughs> uh, first of all. That's why I emailed you and I was like, I will meet with you in person. That's but, right, you did, you were yeah. very serious about that. I was that. like, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. send you my plot, okay? <laughs> the way you replied to me, and I mean, you had a really official ending to your email. That was very convincing. <laughs> and I was with like eight of my friends, right? And I was like, oh my God, Webtoon just reached out to me. And they're like, are you sure it's not a scam? It's totally a scam. You should right, like double check, you should double check. <laughs> then, the second emotion was nervousness and terror. Clearly, you were reaching out to me not because what the information you had or the people at your team had was not substantial mm. enough to feature me right away. Like, I could uh, gather that much, you know, because you needed to know the right. rest of the plot, right? Mm -hmm. From that, I knew then it was kind of like, okay, this is my chance, you know? Yeah. I need to be able to do this well um, because otherwise, I don't know, maybe you'll reply to me and be like, uh, you know, we talked about it and it sucked, so <laughs> stay on Canvas for the rest of your life. And I mean, I mean that could happen. It so, could. Yeah, so <laughs> I was uh, kind of terrified. I think in my head, what I wanted to do is prove to you that I do have everything written out. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted you to be able to, if you had a question, basically, right. you could go into like any, any information I gave you and find the question. Mm -hmm. I would be able to answer anything you had, just to show you that I'm serious about what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing, I'm not joking around. So uh, I opened up Microsoft Word and um, I just- Proceeded to write a novel. To write <laughs> 55 pages. I don't think it was double spaced either, but <laughs> <laughs> in my head too, it was just like the essential stuff, you know? Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, it was. I got it and I was like, this is so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I figured it's not gonna hurt to give you more mm -hmm. than what you need, because if you need less, right. you can tell me I only want you to give me like this yeah. much. And I think I gave you a summary, yeah. like a baby summary, mm -hmm. and then I gave you the entire effing thing. Which I really like. So like mm -hmm. I, I was able to share the, the summary in the smaller bit mm -hmm. um, with my team and with the other editors that allowed us to make a good decision. And I was also able to see your story from start to finish, what you plan to do. I was really impressed that you had an ending plan. That's an amazing thing to have planned when you get started on any series at all, to know where you're wanting to go. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a destination in mind for your characters, for your world, for everything, then you can much more easily get there, mm -hmm. I think. Seeing that from a creator, from you, from anyone that sends a pitch in, is really key and really helpful, at least for me. It's something that I notice. Something I think about when I'm creating series is, I don't know if this is irrelevant info, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Number one, it was for me right, to make something for me. But number two, I was like, I also want the audience to enjoy this. Mm. And potentially, if an editor saw it, you know, for them to, like, be able to see it as have, having potential, yeah. you know, for an original, right? And so, when before I write a series, I always try to make sure that the plot, you know, can be summarized in a sentence, right? I always, I like to take existing concepts, you know, mm -hmm. like something like the Grim Reaper. Like the Grim Reaper in I'm the Grim Reaper, she's not, like, like the common, what you would think a Grim Reaper is. Like right. a Grim Reaper just kind of like walks up and takes your soul and like mm -hmm. that, and it takes everyone's soul, right? But the Grim Reaper in I'm the Grim Reaper, Scarlet, she take, she is specifically sent to kill sinners, like right. bad she people. She murders you. She mm -hmm. murders people, yes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of murder. So instead of coming up with like an entirely new concept for someone who has to go kill sinners, I was like, let me take a Grim Reaper thing, you know, concept and just change it a little bit because yeah. people, the audience, Anyone who's reading it will be able to instantly like get the gist of what I'm trying to tell yeah, them, yeah, right? Yeah. There's not a whole lot to explain at that point. When you mm -hmm. start with something that's familiar to the audience and tweak it just a little bit, it's much easier to get across your world building. Mm -hmm. On the Green Reaper set in a basic city, mm -hmm. um, and everyone kind of understands that. We don't have to learn about what the city life is like. We already understand that and know that, so we can just put ourselves into that really quickly. Mm -hmm. We 
most people have an understanding somewhat of Satan or hell <laughs> um, and, and a Grim Reaper, like you said, and you've just tweaked those a little bit mm -hmm. um, and given us a sort of a different flavor on it, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and additionally, maybe another thing to think about is make sure from the instant, like people's instant understanding, like it can be elevator pitch, mm -hmm. basically. It needs to be able to be simple, but have like be able to have the depth of like the Marianas Trench, you know? <laughs> like um, there's an endless possibility of ways you can explore the idea of like sin or things right. that are bad, right? From an e like just using this initial concept, there are tons of storylines that can be explored, right? Absolutely. And there's lots of depth to the ideas of morality that are presented, existentialism, like that kind of like <laughs> emo stuff. You know, we can like go and explore that from a very easy to, to understand basis. It's very right consumer friendly, I guess. Yeah. And that's just how I prefer to write. And it, it worked, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> Something you touched on, just like being able to talk about the themes mm -hmm. of your piece. So when you build a pitch, obviously we want a title, right? We want a little ele elevator pitch, a one sentence explanation of what it is, um, and then a longer summary, sure. It's also helpful to have your themes to talk about, oh, this is about morality and sin and about the afterlife and what it means to be a sinner or what that is. Um, those are great things to include uh, because that helps set a tone for your story. It helps an editor or someone looking at a pitch to know uh, what you're trying to accomplish with your piece, which is really great to have. Also, we talk about like characters. Mm -hmm. um, Scarlet's really cool. She's really can be very complicated, and so can a lot of the other characters. And I think it's good to know in a pitch what your character, who your characters are, and sort of what their goals are and why they're doing what they're doing. Was it difficult to come up with what your characters wanted to do or wanted to be? Not too much. So uh, it all started with like sort of like the basis, right? The uh, theme, right? And from the theme, I created Scarlet. Like, I always create my characters from the base theme as tools right. to express the theme to the audience, right? So Scarlet was created very specifically to show the audience the nuances of sin and morality and stuff mm. like that. Like, her story and everything is specifically tailored, like, to create a very complicated situation. And the same with uh, Satan is there. He's a judgment. I needed a judgment character, so I was like, oh, Satan exists, you know. I'll use him. And Chase, he was created specifically because because Scarlet needs roots in like the overworld, the real world, and yeah. he his story will go on to serve Scarlet, you know, in yes. a way. So everything is crafted from like the same root, the same base mm -hmm. theme. Like they all have a reason for existing. They're not just there because I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to have like a sexy guy with long hair who like <laughs> shows up and like punches Scarlet and then gets killed? Like that would be cool. No, I don't like. It's not. It's as much as I'd like to do that, I, I cannot do that. You know, I'm trying to write a good narrative. Right. They, they all serve the, the theme. They serve the plot. They serve to help communicate what you wanted to communicate through the series, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as we were working through it, I had a lot of extraneous stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that I personally didn't see as extraneous. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought all of it was essential. But right. having a second eye to look at it and mm -hmm. be like, is this really necessary? And yeah. for me to think, oh, I guess it's not necessary. You know, it's really, really useful. A lot of times that's what we do as editors anyways. We give you that extra outside look that you can't see because you're too close to your characters and mm -hmm. things. Um, but yeah, and I think in, at Webtoon in the pitch process, uh, we do a little bit of that in the early part of the process when we're first reaching out to a creator and like, hey, we're interested in your stuff, um, but we want to know more. We want to see what else you have in store for us or for your readers um, before we get farther into green lighting and making it an original. Um, and so there's the, that, the pitch area, is a, it's a really fun, interesting area of time where I'm getting to know you and we're getting to know this plot together and figuring out what the best parts of it are so we can present that to the team. And then once we get the green light afterwards, we can refine it even further. Something that I see absent from people who are right, like when they write their characters, is they kind of fail to make them people. Um, like. Uh, for me, like the way I wrote the characters is okay, I had their primary motivations, mm. I had, you know, whatever, if they had a sin, their sin written down, you know, what they're trying to accomplish, you know, why they're in the story, but then at the, on the other end, I also had like, you know, this character has an Instagram account, you know, and <laughs> Chase loves to play yeah. World of Fatecraft, yeah, of Fatecraft. Uh -huh. very, uh, the, no copyright, I, <laughs> I mixed it up. Uh -huh. So like, you know, he they're like their character, and he has his cat, you know, so he's normal, he's yes. like, and you know, it's funny too, because I get a lot of, because I made them like actual people, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, 
there's no way Chase is a sinner. He's like too nice. He's too, he <laughs> plays video games and he has a cat. Yeah, like, everyone who plays video games and has a cat is a nice person. Yeah, they're like, there's no way. There's no way this guy's a bad guy. And I'm like, he is. I'm like, you can have <laughs> multiple facets to your personality. Like murderers still like to pet dogs, you know? Well, some do, I'm sure. <laughs> I think in the way I write it is I try to make them like, you know, like, I could see this being a real human being, not just like I said before that I make them, they are a tool for the story, right? But that's just where they're like born from as a tool for the story. But then from there, you need to like flesh them out and make them people. Don't just yeah. make them, you know, like, you, you know, just like things to carry out, like, ah, Scythe Slash, oh no, Sinner's dead, okay, Scarlet goes to bed now, you know, like she has like, yeah quips and conversations and interactions and stuff like that. When I'm writing out my draft, like I know I want to keep the audience's attention. So like I have like smash moments, like I have like what, like 20 of them throughout the series that are like holy shit moments, like that just happened. Like one of the holy shit moments that's in the comic already is um, when, you know, Scarlet kills her first sinner, you know? Mm -hmm. He was actually not like this nice, pure, uh, white-haired dude, you know, who wanted to take her on a nice date. He was a murderer, right? Yeah. And that was an oh shit moment, you yeah. know? And it's basically, the way I write is that it's a series of oh shit moments leading to the ultimate oh shit moment, mm -hmm. which is like the supreme climax, yeah, and then, yeah. which is kind of like the ending sort of, and then the end is there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, whenever I'm doing it, I always ask myself like, oh, would my audience want to read this? Would they be interested in seeing what happens next? Yeah. You know, that's like how I plan things out. I feel you. Well, thank you so very much for sitting down with us, Grave, and talking about pitches. Uh, it's been wonderful having you here with us. Prop Bob. Excellent. Um, this has been Creator 101. If you need any more resources on how to self-publish on Webtoon, please head to webtoon.com and check out Creator 101 on our website. Uh, also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell so you get all the notifications, drop a comment down below if you feel so inclined, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.